So, now epsilon n t u approach we this is for yeah. So, here as, as I said this epsilon n t u's are were given because earlier in fact today's world we do not need epsilon n t u approach. I can do with L m t d approach itself, but only thing is that I have to go strip by strip and design my heat exchanger using or predict the exit temperatures using the L m t d f approach itself. But at that time when Case and London came up with Case and London by that matter Case and London were the first guys who gave and they have books. In fact, there is a book by name Shah and London his business was to sit down and derive all Nusselt numbers for all laminar configurations. Okay, that is Shaw and London book. Case and London also sat down and derived epsilon n t u for all possible configurations one can conceive. Okay, they sat down and wrote it for us that is what we use as handbooks for designing. Okay. Case and London have given us this epsilon n t u approach. Epsilon equal to actual heat transfer by maximum possible heat transfer we know that the maximum possible heat transfer can be between the maximum possible temperature and the minimum possible temperature ha here there is an issue when i take this for the maximum heat transfer i take what is the m dot cp i take for this maximum temperature difference minimum how do you explain them why minimum m dot cp is taken instead of the maximum hmm. More than correct, 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 correct. That is what I do this because I got stuck one day, I could not reach my student. The next day I went back and did these calculations. You spend time on this transparency. This transparency is just to answer the question what I asked you. That is why I should not take m dot c p maximum as opposed to m dot c p minimum the heat load when you take m dot c p maximum will be higher will be higher it cannot it, it is not possible you will get inadvertently very high temperatures which is not possible just go through this transparency just go through this transparency you will correct that is true for both the fluids that is true for both the fluids why only for m dot c p c minimum that, that if I do it only I will understand no, no what I mean is you can tell that after you do it, but without doing you do just do not tell that if you only tell that they will not be able to appreciate that is all my point. Okay. Okay. So, then th these are the places where as a reader when I start reading I get stuck most possibly my students also are going to get stuck their own. So, that is why I am concentrating on those locations only, all others I am just going fast. This is the complete derivation, okay. I am not going to go through this derivation. So, if you just put you are going to get epsilon and n t u is u a m dot c p already professor has told us that u a n t u is gives us the idea of the size of the heat exchanger and effectiveness is a function of ratio of the m dot c p s and the n t u and for all configurations as I said case and London has derived it and given us given us. In fact, honestly I have not derived other than parallel and counter always I think, but I have never done that perhaps we should try that. We can perhaps try and show before maybe for one of the workshops at least for shell and tube might be slightly difficult, but we can still attempt. Let us attempt na, let us attempt before main workshop. Let us see, I am going to give this as exercise for you, because you are all so thorough with heat exchangers. Let us go one mile ahead than what we had gone earlier. Okay. So, any one of these 1, 2, 3, 4, any one of these 4 you please try to derive. You will not get these derivations anywhere you will not get them. One thing is for sure, you will only get the relations. Case and London also does not give you the derivation, he will give you the derived thing. Okay. So, please let us attempt, let us put a assignment for ourselves that 
let me see who is going to answer me first. This shellen tube and then cross flow and unmixed and mixed. Okay. So, let us see who will answer me first. Next, let us come to interpretation of these graphs. What am I? Huh? Last uh, bullet here. Epsilon is a function of uh, specific capacity ratio and NTU. How did one come up with this? Why should it be this that way? There are three non dimensional parameters, right? Effectiveness, CR, and NTU, right? One is something to do with the size, one is something to do with the heat transfer rate, and another is something to do with the Temperature. fluid uh, mass flow rate and property. How on earth will these three talk to each other, or is there any connection? What are the what are the dimensions of each of these quantities? Epsilon dimensionless, C R dimensionless, N T U is also dimensionless. Can we think of these as ratios of some temperature differences? Epsilon is any ratio of temperature differences, it is quite, quite straightforward, there is no problem. C, what about C? C, small c, c minimum by c maximum, that is also temperature difference only. Heat load equal to m dot C p into temperature difference equal to m dot C p into temperature difference, so that is also temperature difference. What about N T u? Q dot equal to? Q dot again, U a L m t d is L m t q dot. That is also temperature difference. So, everything is a ratio of some temperature difference only. So, that is why these non dimensional groups have been grouped. come together. Okay. So, now coming back, I think we will only spend time on one of the cases and then move because I do not think I need to spend time for all others. Okay. Last we will see. Yeah. So, actually, here also, a month you can see here also if I put effectiveness versus NTU. So, you have parallel flow sitting here, counter flow sitting here. Of course, when I am plotting this, I have taken C equal to 1. It is a good idea, one thing I would like to suggest. It is a good idea for the students to ask in the assignment to plot these epsilon versus NTU plots, whatever I have put. Ask them to plot in excel sheet for NTUs varying from 0 to 5 in steps of 0 0.1 or 0 0.0. Excel will calculate all that he has to do is put this, but when he does that he will understand the influence of each parameter at least it will get registered in his mind that okay, this is how it is going to be. Next question is why is it like that. Okay. So, now let us come to this question if I take C is equal to 1 here you can see effectiveness is lower for parallel flow heat exchangers it is higher for counter all other heat exchangers are going to be. So, that is about C equal to 1. Now, let us take how does for a given heat exchanger, how does my for a given heat exchanger, this is for parallel flow. If I understand one rest all are going to follow the same thing. C minimum by C maximum if it is 1 my effectiveness is less as I go on decreasing that it is going to be maximum. What is the meaning of this? How do I explain this? C minimum by C minimum by C maximum is equal to 1 means what? Mass flow rates are same, M C P is same that is what you mean thermal capacity. Yeah, M C P is same, but why should its effectiveness should be lower compared to a case where in which for example, this case where in which C minimum was 0.25 times, let us not take 0, it is little difficult to visualize, we will come to 0, but how do we explain or understand ourselves, why this C minimum by C maximum of 0.25 should be greater than one case physically. Heat transfer rates, heat transfer coefficient you mean, 
when you say heat transfer rates what do you mean do you mean heat transfer coefficients or heat transfer heat transfers have to be same no both sides whatever is lost has to be equal to the other side but Exchange. Hmm. Whatever is the exchange means what is getting exchanged? We are not answering the question, we are only observing it. I want the answer. No, no, that has to have no no that has to have an implication on temperature differences. No. If my mass flow rates difference between the two fluids is different different however large let us say large like point what is happening in the temperature gradients there there is going to be large temperature differences you can explain maybe if i am not have large yeah what professor is drawing is if m dots are same for both <laughs> m dots are same for both maybe it is something like this Okay. For the other one, it will be, let us start with the same, because it has to be same as this minimum, but then it will go on increasing. The temperature, dif we, we can very well feel physically that, if the temperature differences are more, the heat transfers are better, that we all physically feel, that is what precisely is happening, that is what precisely is happening. This is what we need to emphasize in the class, this graph has to be emphasized. That is the extreme case. What is this case actually? What is this case physically? Why I should think of infinite mass flow rate? Can I? No, no. Sorry, I am not joking. I am serious. I mean, I can think of C minimum being zero also. No, C minimum zero means what? That is possible. No. That is what I am saying. That is what I am. We are on the same page. Okay. So, what I am trying to say is, when can I think of C minimum equal to 0? It is 0, it is 0, literally can I make it 0? Yes, no, no, not no fluid, stationary fluid. I am imagining a fluid C minimum being a still fluid, another one is, okay. that is that case, is that okay? but I do not think we need, because their temperature gradients are going to be much larger, so that is why it is much better. This is the basic, I, I usually spend lot of time on this graph trying to get the explanations from them, because this is where we need to interpret, rest all is only plugging in, okay. so that is it. So, this is true for any heat exchanger, any heat exchanger, I would just do it for cross flow and uh, sorry parallel flow, that is it. And another case, you are right, I was, I, I just forgot, you were right. I should imagine a case in which where C maximum is infinite, where in which C max can be infinite, boiler or condenser. So, there also I can get the maximum, that is why I can explain two phase heat exchangers are compact or better than single phase heat exchangers without even reading about two phase flow. Okay. You see the beauty, without getting into two phase flow, we did condensation. Did we know anything about con two phase flow when we did condensation? I do not need anything. What all tools we studied for single phase flow were enough to apply, that is why we taught you condensation first, then came boiling. Okay. Here also, you do not have to be knowing how does two phase flow work, I do not need wide fraction and all that to explain, that can come at the end. So, this also we need to emphasize. Okay. So, the same thing I have put it in points. So, you can have NTU, you can do NTU, that is if you want to, what is, why, why am I writing this equation like this? I had written for epsilon, now I am writing NTU, why am I doing like this? That is to apply, this is what approach, if I write equation in NTU. I had studied two methods, LMTD approach, what was I trying to do in LMTD approach? getting surface area. On the right hand side of this equation, what are all there? Small c, small c is mass flow rates and specific heats, which I know. What is epsilon? It is all temperatures. If I know the temperatures and the specific heats, I can get. So, 
if I that is what is the greatness of case and London. See, if NTU is there means you do not have to go to LMTD approach at all. You can size your heat exchanger. All that I have done is transform the previous equations which were written for epsilon because here we wanted to predict the temperatures for a given size. The same equation has been now transformed into NTU. So, if I have to size my heat exchanger, I can use this. So, what I am trying to say is that please do not tell the student that when I know this, when I know inlet temperatures, when I know the mass flow rate, LMTD approach only has to be used, not true, not true. Both the approaches can be used in both the situations in today's world. Epsilon NTU is straightforward, with, with calculator we can do, but for LMTD approach we may need the excel sheet to check out the exit temperatures. I think, okay. so the, with this emphasis, I think we are through with our course. So, of course, uh, one point I want to emphasize before I say through with the course, pumping power. Nothing comes free in this world. Pumping power is a major deterrent. It is not enough to increase the heat transfer rates, but that comes at a cost. So, we need to calculate the pumping power. We need to calculate the pumping power and then fix the sizes of the pumps. Pumping power always we say, okay, we can neglect. You see in steam power plants we draw, no? We write what? In steam power plants, what do we draw? Bloiler, turbine, condenser and a small pump and we always in the class in thermodynamics we say pumping power is negligibly small, it is not so. In a nuclear power plant I learnt it hard way, when I went to Tarapur tap 3, Tarapur nuclear power plant, that pump is as big as our mechanical engineering department which is of 100 megawatts, mind boggling. So, point is what we tell in the class is sometimes very, very giving a wrong impression okay that why i why i take these examples because pumping power cannot be neglected pumps can be that big size and that high capacity mind boggling mind boggling 30 megawatts imagine and i neglect that in thermodynamics <laughs> but when i neglect that i should be telling that that's what is my point that's what is my point go ahead now you are negligible compared to what? What is the tap 4 plant? That is 1000 megawatt compared to 1030, but still 30 matters. Light up so many <laughs> 30 matters compared to 1000, this has become small. That is what we have to basically point is we need to make them feel through numbers. I am taking this Lord Kelvin's statement. Lord Kelvin came up with the idea of temperature because he believed everything. There is a statement I do not recollect exactly the same way. What he, is, what he says is in his statement, if you do not know something, you will tell in through words. If you do not understand, you tell through words. If you have understood something perfectly well, you will tell through numbers. That is how it is, that is why he is called as a lord. Lordship has got come not just like that, because of this philosophy, because of this philosophy. He is the one we, he, who gave us the concept of temperature and how to measure it. Otherwise, there is no heat transfer, is not it? That potential, that concept of temperature came because of his philosophy of quantifying things. That is what we need to inculcate. When we are teaching also, everything we should be trying to teach through numbers. That is what we will attempt in the main workshop. A concept introduced will solve a problem. Concept introduced will solve a problem. Is that okay? So, I think with this we will, we will come to conclusion, we have not completed, I always tell this in the class, we have not completed, we are stopping, okay? we have not completed, there can, there can never be a completion for a course, we are, we are supposed to only start somewhere midway.